Welcome to the Two Old Kids and Two Young Adults podcast. We've combined life experience with young adult drive and ambition. Are you just starting to college plan? Did you finish your education and wonder, now what? Join us in this lively discussion about the topics you need to know to create the next stage of your life's dreams, careers, finances, education, and more. Hey, this is Ed Sanderson and Alex Songs, two of the co-hosts of uh, Two Old Kids, Two Young Adults. We have a very interesting episode here today. We're going to be talking to Tom and Evan, two folks who are in the uh, software development uh, career. One's just getting started out of college. One's been at it for a while. It's an opportunity for these folks to ask questions, kind of Tom gives some insight on what the industry looks like. Evan to kind of talk about his path so far. We're gonna let them communicate, chat, ask some questions. Alex and I will try to stay out of the way, maybe put some some stuff in there to kind of get some couple questions that we might have answered. Um, like I said, it's two young adults, two old kids. And uh, basically we're a podcast. Uh, you might see it with video. Sometimes you see it with just see it with you hear it with just audio uh if you like it give us a thumbs up if you love it share it with somebody and if you want to hear more about it subscribe so uh having said that let's get moving so um tom uh i connected with you uh, on a software project that we've been chatting about and i mentioned this idea this podcast you said hey man that sounds pretty good i'm like cool great you be on maybe you can help (laughs) some young people understand the dynamic and ever expanding world of software development and maybe tom you give a little background where you went to school how you got some experience and where you're at in your career path sure thanks uh thanks for having me on uh good to meet everybody here that i guess evan the only one i haven't met um yeah i grew up in maine um, I always thought I wanted to be an architect. Um, and so up till about, I think it was two weeks before I went to school, I, I woke up one morning and said, I, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do computer science. So I called Clemson University where I went and asked them if they had any room left in their department and they had one spot left. So wow. I, I switched over from architecture to computer science. And I always kind of thought I wanted to have a, a business component to it. Um, cause I, even as a kid, I was scheming up different businesses that I wanted to start and, you know, never was the right time. And I think I was 12 at the time when I tried to start my first one. Um, and so I showed up there and I did a hybrid, uh, degree of computer science and business management. Uh, so I got the best of both worlds there. Um, and I was at Clemson for six years. I took a couple years off, um, during that time to, to do work. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a, a web design job in the first week of being at school. I uh, went to a career fair, just kind of put my name in the hat, and, and the company took a shot on me and um, ended up part owner of that business uh, before leaving college. Um, then moved out to California, um, knowing at some point I wanted to have my own business someday. Uh, the first half of my career, I kind of spent three to four year stints at different companies in different industries. So I was with an HR company, a staffing company, um, a consulting company uh, that worked for Microsoft. Um, I was in the consumer goods space for a while. Um, And then I spent about 10 years in digital marketing, um, kind of seeing that that would give me a good sales and marketing background um, and influence it with a lot of different companies. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I went off on my own. I felt I was finally ready to, to take it on and, and build my own team and do my own thing. And, and, and that's where I'm at today. So spent a lot of, a lot of time working in a lot of different technologies along the way. And, you know, was fortunate enough to not kind of pigeonhole myself in, in one technology or, or one industry. And, um, and yeah, now I've got my own company of about 12 people and, you know, we do work in all facets of software development. Thanks, Tom. All right, Alex, why don't you introduce our other guest, Evan, and uh, we'll learn more about him and his path. Awesome. Yeah. So um, Evan and I met um, quite some time ago. And um, when we were initially discussing this podcast, um, Tom was one of the first people that we discussed wanting to um, bring on just because you have obviously a lot of 
phenomenal experience in the uh, computer science field, Tom. So obviously I knew Evan and I was like, well, he's just going through the uh, computer science, um, kind of the beginning stages of his career right now in that same field. So I'm um, just well, I thought you guys would be two very good people to connect. So I'll turn it over to you, Evan. Oh, hi. Uh, that was really interesting hearing about your story, Tom. Sounds like you've had a lot of different experiences in the industry. That's kind of what I want to do too, is I want to, you know, get kind of dip my feet in everything. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I went to UCLA for computer science and for math. And then I graduated in December and the company I'm working for, I found them at the career fair, the UCLA career fair. And this was the first job that this was the first company I applied for and I spoke to them and they told me the job is out in Austin. And I said, Oh, Austin seems pretty cool. So I just signed and I've been doing some internship stuff for them. And then once I move, you know, when I move next week, they're going to transition me to full time. And then that's it. Yeah. It's my experience, but sounds so like Evan, you've had a lot of different experiences. Yeah. Sorry to step on you there. Um, I'm sorry. Did you say you graduated in December? So at this time of recording, that's what, five months ago you just got out of school? Yeah, I got out of school December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So five months. Yeah. Gotcha. And I, I got the job in November, I think beginning of November. And yeah, that's my, yeah, that's what, that's what's been going on with me. Yeah. All right, so Evan, the floor is yours, man. You got a professional here who does this all day, every day, has been doing it for years. Uh, you got his ears, you got his attention. You're a young buck getting started. What would you like to ask Tom in terms of whether you know it's about his trajectory, his experience? Uh, you mentioned that you might be interested in starting your own business. Uh, what would you like to ask him? Because if you don't, I will. <laughs> My turn to ask. Yeah, go right ahead. My question is like, how did you get into the management side of things? Because the way that, I don't know, just I feel like the way I'm headed, it's just, I'm kind of just taking orders and not really making any like managerial decisions. But how did you like, yeah, move I into management? I got, well, I always wanted to, um, from a really young age, I always just kind of wanted to do my own thing. And I knew that. And I, and I knew to do that, I had to learn from people that, that were doing that. And so when I went to college, like I went to the career fair and I specifically looked for, you know, a company that was really small that, that I knew I could play a lead role in, um, and that's not the path for everybody, right? <laughs> like some people need that development time and they need, you know, a, a team around them and they need that kind of nurturing, you know, component of it. I knew I didn't need that. I wanted to hit the ground and run. And so I found a place where I could do that. Um, and, and the company, you know, there was a sales guy and there was kind of an operations guy and they would, you know, they just had different developers come through and it just worked out where I learned really quickly you know, I gained their confidence and they let me go with it. And it, and it gave me confidence to keep doing that. Um, and so when I, my first job out of college, I went and worked for an owner of a software development company and he wanted out. So I got to be his, you know, his guy. <laughs> and so I got to kind of run with it and lead again. And, and I just kept kind of building on those opportunities, finding businesses where I could lead. Um, and, and kind of be in charge at a younger age. Um, and it gave me a lot of confidence. It gave me a lot of experience and it. Um, it just kind of ended up working out. And, um, I mean, it's good that, you know, you want to do that. Um, but at the same time, you need to, you know, you need to explore all the different areas, right? Because you don't know, you have an idea that you want to manage, that you want to do that. Right. But there's so many different ways to do to play in the software development space. Um, and, and it's important to get the experience in all facets, I think, to, to find out what it is you do want to do. Yeah, um, and you listed a lot of those different things that you did, Tom, too. So I'm sure there's a lot of trial and error for you 
especially in the beginning because there's obviously so many facets that you can go into in this field <clears throat> yeah i mean i have someone else who i'm kind of mentoring through getting into the industry and i'm, I'm making him do and experience all the different jobs um because now when you're younger you can you have time right you have time to spend a year doing you know systems development you have a year to be a database engineer you know kind of work on that side of it you have a year to work on front facing applications like and you have you have time to experiment in the different areas to figure out what it is you really like to do um so now, I guess that would be one of my questions to you, Evan, is I, I know you're, the company you're working for is security-based, but what, you know, outside of the management side of it, what part of software engineering kind of got you excited to, to drive you into that field? Um, I wasn't necessarily excitement. It was more what I was good at. So I did really well in my networking class, and I... Um, yeah, I mean, it was just intuitive for me and the, the programming that I do was intuitive for me and the math has been intuitive. I mean, I think the passion is, is not there at this time. Um, and when I say management, I'm not necessarily talking about like wanting to start my own business, but more I was wondering advice, how to move up the ladder, how to move up the food chain, you know, um, like how to get to my, to where my boss is, you know, how to get to where my boss's boss is. That's what I'm more wondering because I don't think I have enough experience. I don't think I have enough drive at this point to even consider starting anything on my own or even with someone else or whatever. So at this point, it's just how would I be able to move up the ranks in the company I'm working for now? That's, that's kind of like what I'm trying to figure out and process. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's a little bit dependent upon the, the company too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think there's one, you know, kind of path to doing that or one formula mm -hmm. to, to do that. It, um, one of the things I always looked for is, and it was advice I got really early on, I think in high school from a, I think from my basketball coach was in life, I always focus on the people, not the role. So if you're focusing on being a good person, surrounding yourself with good people, um, the roles will follow, right? So if you if you want to be that great manager, if you want to move up the ranks and be a VP, if you want to be a CTO, right? You put yourself in a position around good people who do those things, and you will absorb from them. You know, if you put yourself around bad bosses, around bad people it's going to be harder to grow. It's going to be harder to learn the things that you need to do to get to that next level because they're probably not the right people to teach it to you. Um, and so find, finding, you know, people that you're comfortable with, um, people that, that are good people, the rest of that will, I think will come. It's always come for me. Um, I've certainly had bad bosses, <laughs> but I've had really great bosses and, and the learnings that you take from those far outweigh the, you know, the experiences that you have with, you know, bad bosses or, you know, bad coworkers. I have a uh, follow up question there, Tom. I think this is stuff that obviously goes into your field, but uh, <clears throat> excuse me, any other field as well. What are some of the best lessons that you have learned from, you know, someone that you're working with, whether it was, you know, a manager and what are some of the things that you took away that you're like, I am absolutely not going to do that. <laughs> um, I think on the positive side, because that's general, generally where I like to live, um, be open to, to change and to new technology. Um, it's, it's scary and, and everyone always likes the shiny new object, right? A new technology comes out and everyone's like, oh, this solves every problem. Um, and it doesn't always, right? So if you're open to that change and you're open to exploring new technologies, you can pull in the parts that help you. Um, right. And not just jump on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, another piece of advice I got on really early on was let the problem dictate the technology that you use and the systems that you implement. Don't try to force a solution that you have or a technology that you use onto every problem. Um, because every problem is different and every problem can be solved 
in a bunch of different ways. Um, and so being becoming a master of knowing what technology to implement at the right time for that specific problem will get you noticed very quickly. Um, rather than just saying, I know this language, so I'm going to use it all the time. Like that's, that's a quick way to get in a rut in, in your career and not, um, you know, be able to grow and, and show people that you have the ability to adapt and, and be a forward thinker. So Tom, follow up to Evan's question about bosses and bosses. Um, it sounds like, and Evan, you can comment, it sounds like you're in a decent sized company. So Tom, yeah. when do you, in your career, when do you decide or when have you decided when it's appropriate to be in a big organization where you can get, um, you know, the structure to it versus a smaller organization where you have a little bit more flexibility, but maybe not as much structure? How would you put that? Do you think that starting at a bigger company is good because you get some of that structure or do you like, I would move as quickly as I can to a small organization. We could be a little bit more nimble. Uh, how, where do you come out on that subject? I think it's 100% dependent upon your personality. So not every person should, should ever, like some people should never work in a big company with, with this specific structure and scale and growth plan and, you know, all of this stuff. Some people just aren't meant for that. You know, like some kids you know, need to learn a certain way in high school, right? So they spend their first couple of years struggling because they're being forced into learning a certain way. And then they get a teacher that recognizes that they need something different. And all of a sudden they moonshot, right? Mm -hmm. And so that can be the same thing if you get into a big company and you don't have the personality for that, that can really set you back. And, and that's something you just have to know about yourself. Um, I knew very early on that that wasn't the path for me. Um, I knew that I didn't want to be, they would say <laughs> back then in the cubicle, right? I just sure. didn't want to get tasks put across my desk and do them and, you know, move on to the next one. I knew that wasn't my personality. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I never went that path. I think the biggest company I worked for was probably 50, 60 people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that had some structure to it, but I ran the development and in, in IT part of the, of the company. And so I never really had to climb that ladder, so to speak. I kind of entered there. Um, and those were the jobs I always looked for just because I knew my personality. Um, I would say for, it's hard for me to speak to it because I, I, ne I never went through it. But there are people that thrive in that environment of they're very task-based, right? They want to they wanna be a part of a bigger team. They want to have a bunch of coworkers. They want to have a specific role. And they want to get the folder or the task of what they need to do and then do it and then do the next one. Like that's just their personality. That's the way they thrive. And, and I think it's just knowing that about yourself and putting yourself in the right position. How do I, let's say I want to, let's say for my next job, I want to try something small, a startup, maybe join a startup. What things should I look for in the startup to make sure or to, at least be like, okay, the company isn't going to bust. Like what are some good things for me to look for? So I'm like, I can feel a little bit secure in my decision to leave the big company. Um, well, I, I would go back to the first thing I mentioned earlier, which is the people. So if, if you have, a, if you get a good sense for who the people are, right. And you feel like they're, they're good people that they're in it for a, a, a purpose, right? Not just to make a buck, right? If there's a purpose behind what they're trying to do and they're good people, that is a big check mark right off the bat. The other one is, is how have they planned and prioritized, right? So don't be afraid to ask them to show you their plan. What's their roadmap? What's their thoughtfulness about how to get through it, right? If, if they're, you know, shooting and aiming later, that's a big, <laughs> you know, sign that that's probably not a good spot for a startup. But if they've thought through it, if they've planned, if they, you know, have a roadmap and, and you can jump in and, and you feel like there's a, a runway for you to learn and execute, um, that's going to be a good situation for you. If they don't know what they're doing and they don't have a plan, and this is your first time in a startup or a small company, I, I would uh, be wary of that. 
because that that's a, usually been a recipe for for failure. Um, and a lot of startups do fail. Um, you know, so it's I think people, you know, do they have a plan? And then um, what is the team? Right? Is it do you need to be in a local like a, a team in an office or can you work with a remote team? You know, um, I'm assuming you'll be able to figure that out in this job. Um, they're mm -hmm. going to have everyone local, but they'll probably still have remote resources that you have to work with. Yeah. Um, and, and so kind of sticking your head in there and being a part of that and getting the experience of working with local and remote and, and how to do that, that'll be a, a big time recipe for a startup as well. So Evan, I, I had a piece of advice on this because I don't know that this is specific to a software company. I think finding a mentor in an organization is extraordinarily important no matter where you're at. And back to Tom's comment about culture, if there's somebody that's not willing to be that for you or to you, that to me is also a pretty big sign um, that maybe they, they're not looking to develop talent and really uh, move them forward. So sometimes it's just a function of asking the question, right? So you just can go to your boss and say, listen, I'm a, Evan, I'll tell you a story about this. I remember going to my boss and I got a new boss and she's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And I'm like, I want to have your job and I want it right now. And she <laughs> said to me, she's like, that's the kind of person I'm looking for. She's like, you're not going to get this job anytime soon, but I like the fact that you're interested in learning how to be a manager or how to be better and wanting to ascend in an organization. And she goes, it might end up being that you get to stay here and do that, or maybe you're in a situation where you have to move on someplace else. She goes, either way, I'm going to be honest with you. And Evan, about five years later, she came up to me, said, do you still want my job? And I said, yeah. She's like, then let's go find you somewhere else to work because I'm not leaving anytime soon. And she invested in my future. She was the person that was like, let me help you get where you want to go. And sometimes it's the place you're at. Maybe it's a new place. I think I would like Tom to explore all the different aspects of what you can do in software development. I know Tom does stuff on the website stuff and creatively he does different things. I think the other thing that... You, you might be interesting is going out and I call it the side hustle, but maybe doing little projects here and there so that you can get some of that experience, get to know more people, develop that resume, particularly if you're looking to ascend fast. If you want to move quick, sometimes being in a big organization isn't the place for that. You've got to find smaller enterprise type stuff where you can get in and get your hands dirty and do multiple, multiple things so that you can get that practical experience. And then you go, man, back to that word you used earlier, passion. I have found the passion in the work that I do. And then all of a sudden you're, you're rock and rolling. And then the only thing, and I'll give you back the mic in a minute, Evan, but the only other thing I would say about startups, you know what's great about being young? You can take those risks, probably more so than when you're a little older, maybe you got a house payment and a family. Um, if, if that's something that's of interest to you, I would say explore that as much as possible. And again, back to maybe that's something you're doing evenings and weekends when you're young and you can stay up 16, 18 hours straight and live off of a few cups of coffee and no food. That's when you start to really get into that. And I'm sure Tom can talk about some projects he's been on that he's fell in love with and has had the opportunity to be in an equity position or, you know, he said it's one of his first gigs, he became a co-owner. That stuff sounds really cool and interesting to me, but it really is about knowing who you are and whether you're comfortable in that environment. So having said that, uh, Evan, I would say that's advice across the board, no matter what occupation or whatever career you're trying to develop. But man, I told Tom not that long ago, I wish when I had an opportunity to step over into tech and software, I wish I had done it because I feel like there was a part of me that is... Like I thrive, I, I'm excited when I talk to Tom and other people about what they do. So if that's what you're looking for is how to tap into that passion, I think you're going to have to start exploring other options. It starts from those side hustles to maybe see, all right, this is what I'm passionate about. Yeah. They want to go this direction with it because there's, I mean, Tom can attest to it. There's so many different directions. You can get so many niches you can go into. So I really like the side hustle idea for you just doing that during the weekends or the evenings, you know. 
All right, Evan, yeah, the mic's I'll, back to you, buddy. You got any more questions for Tom? Yeah, I was just going to, I mean, this might sound, this might not come off the best, but you probably have a lot of connections and you probably know a lot of people, Tom. And from your experience, do you think that, I'm talking about monetary success, your friends that have worked in big companies versus your friends that have, you know, kind of worked in the startups and done their own things, who has, who generally is more successful at the end of the day? Because I know that, like I have friends that are working, you know, at Facebook out of college making 250 and, you know, they can move up every three years and max out at like four or 500, 600,000 a year. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just curious. I mean, I don't, I know this question is not the best of questions, but you know, a lot of people. So. I mean, if you're, if you're talking straight financial, you know, success, I think yeah. in our industry, um, it's going to be the kind of the startup mentality, right? That's where you can make the, the quickest buck. Mm-hmm. Um, and this will sound probably equally <laughs> as evasive of an answer, but it really depends on how you define success, right? And, and what, what that has to look for you. And that's going to be different at what you're probably 22, 23, 23. Um, that definition is going to be drastically different now than when you're 40 or 45 or 50. Right. And because when you have, you know, if, and when you have wife and kids and, you know, all of that stuff, success will be different. It'll have a different meaning. Um, And so to Ed's point now, when you have the, (laughs) the youth and you have the energy and you have the freedom, you know, now's the time to, if, if you want to establish some early financial, you know, freedom and success, it's, it's about gaining some quick experience and that's either side hustle or taking risks with the career, right. With the job opportunities Mm -hmm. and, and see if you can get some early wins that can allow you some flexibility to make choices of, you know, okay, now I have a family. Do I want to start this 20 year career where I have a nine to five, right? It's not a six to six or a (laughs) six to midnight, you know, like mine is sometimes, um, you know, so it's take advantage of the youth and the energy. And if that's what's important to you now, which is a hundred percent fine, um, there's nothing to be ashamed of there, then go for it, right? Get on Upwork, get on some of these platforms and do some work for people, make connections, get a, get a good name for yourself out there, even do some free work, right? Get in there and find someone who needs some help and say, Hey, I'm trying to get some experience. You know, I see you have this job. It looks like it might take five or 10 hours. You know, let me help you out. Um, You know, that's a connection that you have for a long time. Um, And generally, it's someone who owns a business, in my experience with Upwork. um, They're business owners. They're people that need to get something done because it's important to them and, and their success, and they don't have the ability to do it. If you hop in and help them out, they'll come back to you and they'll tell their CEO friends about you. And, and all it takes is one little phone call, you know, or helping someone out for a couple hours and it can change your life. Um, you know, I, I had that happen to me a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, so it's not, it's not about, you know, having six months of experience and, you know, going in and doing a little bit of free work for somebody or just going to do a small job. It's, you can do that forever. Um, you know, and I, I got, I went to help somebody just for a few hours and it's turned into a, a really amazing opportunity and I could have missed it by not being there. Um, and so there's, there's something to be said for just kind of going for it and, and putting your name out there and, and putting the energy behind it. Hey, Evan, one thing on that, I worked with one student and uh, she went to school in mathematics and she has a PhD now and she interned at Facebook and she interned at Apple, two amazing opportunities. Yeah. And you know what she does for a living now? She's a professor. <laughs> so she had the opportunity to make some serious cash that, like you were talking about your friends and she would just prioritize things completely different. 
and uh-huh. she wasn't motivated by the money. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you that if I had to go back and play this as a young man, I probably would have loaded up on the cash and then yeah. kind of stockpiled some money and get some experience. And then, like we've been talking about, go and get a little gig here, a little project there. I know Tom can't get into the details of this particular project that he's talking about, but he's met some amazing people. I'll say it for him and has a gigantic upside in terms of what the opportunity looks like for his short-term and long-term future just by getting involved. It's a fantastic story. Um, But having said that, I think that's the key, right? Which is where are you at in your comfort level and where are you at in terms of risk reward and what do you get for trading one for the other? Mm -hmm. Um, Believe it or not, guys, we've been at this almost 25 minutes. I don't want to cut it short, but Evan, if you've got any more questions you want to ask Tom, fire away. My only other question that I was going to ask is, do you see, like in our industry, you know, the, the tech industry, um, I feel like working remotely, it works. It works. Do you think that this could be the way it is for the foreseeable future? Do you think it could just like maybe hybrid? But I have a feeling that a lot of the people I work with, we all kind of like working from home. And I know that Airbnb, the CEO came out, said that they're for sure all working at home, you know, no more going to the office. So what do you, what do you, what do you think is going to happen in the future? Uh, I mean, I think the, the genie is not going back in the bottle, right? So we've found over the last two and a half, three years that it can be done and it can be done successfully. Yeah. Um, I think, and I have clients who are actively trying to get back to an office and force all their employees back into an office. I don't know that that's going to be successful. Um, People like their freedom. They like being able to go to their daughter's dance class at four o'clock in the afternoon, come home and finish cleaning out their email, you know, or doing something that's not time sensitive, right? If, if you got to drive an hour to work, you know, in an hour home, you know, and now you've proven that you can save two hours of your day and get more family time and get more balance and, and all that stuff. People aren't going to give that up. Um, and so I, I don't think it's, <laughs> it's not going anywhere in our industry for sure. In other industries, you know, there is a component to some businesses. You just have to be on site. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but in our industry, no, it's anyone who tries to force that isn't going to get the best talent. They're not going to get the the best workers and they're not going to have the retention, you know, that they need to be successful. Um, so I, you know, I would be alarmed if I was looking for a job and they said I had to come to the office every day because it's been proven that it's not necessary. And if you don't have the culture and you don't have the processes in place, you know, that's the business's fault, you know, and, and they haven't adapted. Um, so no, I, I don't see it going anywhere. <laughs> Um, so, Tom, I wanted to just let you kind of, your experience is a very powerful teacher. Um, any thoughts for Evan or anybody else who's watching this, who's thinking about the software industry, any piece of advice or anything you want to convey that might help them in terms of developing this interest or moving in that, in this direction? Um, try a lot of different things. Um <laughs> Try to be a, a back-end you know, systems programmer, be a data engineer, be a, a UI developer, right? Even if you're not great at it, do it so that you know what it is, so that you can have empathy for the people that do do it. <laughs> and you know how to communicate with them and you know, how, you know what they're going through and what their point of view is, right? Because um, it, it helps you, right? If you don't know what someone else is doing, how can you do your part to make them successful? Right. Mm -hmm. And then how do they have confidence in you to know, hey, when I get something from Evan, it's rock solid. He knows what I want. He's kind of set me up for success. And now I can go. And if you're on the kind of the last leg of the race, you know, if you've done some of the back end engineering and everything, you know, you know how to better communicate with them on your needs and how they can better deliver things to you to make you successful. Um, So try everything, even if it's for a small amount of time, get the experience in it. be a great listener. 
I would say is, is a big one too. Um, if you have people giving you advice, take it. You don't always have to implement it. You don't always have to do it their way, but you can take 10%, 20%, 80% of what they say and, and implement that. And if you're not listening to your client, if you're not listening to your coworker, you know, if you're not listening to your boss, um, you know, that's going to be a problem. Um, and something non-related to work is have another hobby outside of computers. <laughs> <laughs> Have, have a release that um, you can go to that has nothing to do with programming or, you know, work. Just have something else that you can escape to, even if it's for half an hour. Um, because sometimes you can solve a problem when you're not focusing on it. Yeah. Um, Good device. You know, play golf, play basketball, go for a walk, you know, chase the dog around the yard, whatever it is. Have something else that, you're, that you enjoy that's, that doesn't relate to your, your uh, industry. And go from there. That's great feedback. I think we got to have Tom on again yeah. to kind of just talk about project management, all kinds of more technical stuff. But I wanted to allow Evan to get in here and listen to what uh, uh, someone in his space has been doing to create a successful work environment for himself and his, and his employees and who's been through all of it. And I like that idea, Tom, of getting some experience in all facets of the software engineering game, not only to have the experience, but also maybe to crack open some of that passion that Evan's looking for. So listen, I'm gonna wrap up here, fellas, uh, on behalf of Alex and Evan and Tom, this is Ed Sanderson. Uh, co-host of Two Old Kids, Two Young Adults. It's a podcast. Maybe you're listening to it. Maybe you're watching watching it. Either way, if you love it, just give us a thumbs up. If you really, really love it, share it with somebody who could use this information. And then subscribe because really great episodes coming forward. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Ed. Good luck, Evan. Thank you. Thanks for the advice, Tom. I appreciate it. Of course. It. Quality advice. Thank you, everyone. Make sure and subscribe to this show so you don't miss the next episode of Two Old Kids and Two Young Adults podcast. We want to hear from you as well. You can email us at 2ok2ya at gmail.com.